Hello everybody, welcome to another great module. This time we will be going over critical thinking. Remember, critical thinking is an important aspect of this class. Because when we're writing our essays and when we're writing, it's important that we're doing so critically, that we're rationalizing and exhibiting a number of other characteristics that are crucial for being persuasive. And so when we think of critical thinking, it's not just an idea about thinking hard about something, but a crucial set of skills to make de decisions and resolve issues. And there's a process to going about doing this. Critical thinking is more than just thinking a lot or dwelling on a subject. It's about thinking in a logical way. And so critical thinking and logic are uh, important partners in how we write and how we think. And so to become better writers, it's important that we become better critical thinkers and that we recognize the logic in how we're thinking. And when I say we recognize the logic in how we're thinking, logic is essentially the study and methods of how we distinguish good arguments from bad arguments. And so when we're thinking about uh, a topic, when we're writing, it's imperative that we can distinguish good from bad arguments so that when we're trying to make a persuasive case, we're doing so in a way that's free from logical errors, that we're doing so in good analytic ways and we're avoiding the pitfalls that come with incorrect reasoning. And so in this class, it's gonna be important that in addition to developing our skills of writing, we also need to develop our skills of critical thinking and our use in logic and rationalizing. When we think of logic, it's different from just a mere opinion. Logic is going to be arguments for something being the case. Opinions, on the other hand, are simply uh, statements, propositions about something with no reason behind it. We often think about opinions as being a part of our feelings and emotions rather than reason. And so I might think that my opinion is that Pepsi tastes better than Coke. And if you remember from last week's slide, this isn't something that we really want to try and make a case for because it's just my personal feeling. And my personal feeling isn't something that I can persuade someone else to believe in because at the end of the day, I have my feelings and other people have their feelings. So instead, when we're writing essays, it's imperative that we're using logic, that we're basing our uh, paper on rational argument where we have reasons to support uh, a specific position. We're not going to be able to have reasons support a conclusion, if you remember from last week, if we're dealing with an opinion. Because at the end of the day, I have an opinion. And why do I have an opinion? Well, because I just feel a certain way. A logical argument, however, would suggest that I'm holding a position because I have a set of reasons that I can then defend and support. And assuming that you believe my reasons to be correct, you ought to believe my proposition as well. And so it's important that when we're writing, that we're using logic, that we're forming good arguments with support and not just using opinions. By being better critical thinkers, we're actually using a number of different skills and honing a number of different skills. Analytic skills, obviously, with the logic aspect, but also communication skills. If your position for a paper 
is to argue a certain point, then it's important that you're communicating not only the clarity of that point, what, what it is that you are intending your reader to believe, but that you're supporting it with good reasoning and you're making sure to communicate why those reasons support the point that you're making. In addition, you'll be developing your research skills because when we're forming arguments, when we're finding support and evidence, it's important that we're finding good support and evidence, something that we're going to talk about later on in this course. The research that you do is imperative to understanding what is true and what will eventually support your thesis statement or conclusion. Being a good critical thinker also requires flexibility in your way of thinking. A lot of different arguments require that we take positions that may go against how we feel. When we do the research, it might turn out that what is true is different than what we thought. And our ability to be flexible, our ability to be open-minded is an important part of not only being a good critical thinker, but how we communicate, how we grow as an individual and as a writer, and how we become a better learner. By doing this, we're going to become more creative in solving problems. By being more open-minded, we'll be able to uh, look at arguments and defend arguments in differing ways. We'll be able to have empathy and understanding that will allow us to look at problems from different perspectives. And hopefully, it'll encourage our curiosity. When we look at fundamental beliefs that we hold or fundamental positions that we believe in, we want to know that those are good positions. We want to know the things that we believe are supported with strong argumentation. And so we will look at our arguments, we will look at our beliefs more carefully and with greater interest. In addition, being a good critical thinker means being a collaborative learner. I mentioned the term empathy and its importance in understanding other perspectives in order to tackle issues. In order to do that, it's important that we're communicative, that we're sharing ideas. And as we go further in this class, we will be doing that on the topic of love and sex so that we can get different perspectives, so we can get help from our fellow classmates, and that way, be able to understand a topic with more depth. <clears throat> there are a number other, of other features for being a good critical thinker, and some of those will be expressed in your assignment for this week, or for this module, rather. but may include the idea of confidence, having high self-esteem, having a good sense of direction. When our reasoning is good, when we're able to construct arguments and support our position, we're able to feel confident in our beliefs. We're able to grow individually. And this is something that transcends just writing papers. This is something that we do every day and experience every day. 
we hold positions, we make positions and support them. We try to get people to believe the things that we do. Other people try to get us to believe things that they do. And it's important that we understand reasoning behind these positions, what makes those reasons good, what makes those reasons bad, and so forth. And while we'll be gaining these characteristics and traits, it's important to note that there will be some road barriers preventing us from doing so. Recognizing these is the first step in overcoming them. Resistance is one of those barriers. It's important that we're not resisting ideas. We're not resisting where the research is pointing us. Resistance acts as a barrier to effective critical thinking. And so we wanna make sure that we're keeping that open mind. That we're trying to look at arguments from multiple viewpoints. Oftentimes we read something that we don't uh, necessarily agree with, and in our brain it's just resisting the information and not even giving what it is we're reading a chance. This isn't the correct way to be a good critical thinker. We need to be able to take in information, sort out good from bad information, but also appreciate aspects uh, of writing that may not appeal directly to us. For instance, I might read, uh, I might read something from uh, ancient Greece and think to myself, well, this certainly isn't true. They didn't have a good concept of physics and science. So I'm not going to pay attention to anything that's in here. But this would be a resistance to understanding and accepting aspects that could come out of Greek writing, ancient Greek writing, that could be very helpful for my way of thinking, perhaps methods and procedures for how to proceed in thinking or writing. And so we need to make sure that we're not resisting, but being accepting of the information that we read in here. Ways in which we resist is typically to avoid things that we don't like hearing. If we hear something that goes against an opinion or belief of ours, we can get overly emotional trigger anger. And while emotion has a specific purpose within writing, we want to make sure that it doesn't have a purpose within the, the critical thinking argumentative portion of writing. When we're critically thinking, we want to separate out emotions and make sure that our arguments and that our way of thinking is free from logical error. We want to make sure that we're not just repeating cliches that sound good but really have no meaning or purpose to what it is that we're thinking or talking about. And certainly not fall into denial that something is true. We look to where the evidence points and accept that what has the best information at hand is where we ought to be in our way of thinking. We certainly don't want to avoid learning about something and just being ignorant about it or conforming to what just everybody else believes. We want to keep that open mind. We want to challenge 
everything. And it is a struggle. And so we want to make sure that we're not getting caught up in minute details. We want to make sure that we're not being overwhelmed. That we're not being distracted or hindered. That way we can think freely, clearly, and avoid those logical errors and reasoning. In addition to being resistant, we can also be narrow-minded in our thinking. We often have an absolute way of looking at the world. Things are either black and white, but in most instances, this isn't the case. And so keeping an open mind and being flexible will allow us to see beyond just yes or no, black or white, up or down. Similarly, we don't want to think solely from an egocentric position. Just because we've experienced things or we believe things doesn't mean that's how the world works doesn't mean that's how everybody else experiences things. And so we need to gain that sense of empathy, that sense of perspective sharing, to understand and cultivate our awareness about the world. And be free to think in a way that may go against the norm. This may lead to an ethnocentric or anthropocentric belief that humans are most important, most significant, that there are inherent superiority in one's own particular culture or subgroup. But keeping an open mind in challenging not just others' beliefs and other arguments, but your own for why the world is the way it is, will help us become more knowledgeable in an area and form better arguments for being persuasive. The better arguments we can form, the more persuasive we can be, but also the more confident we can be. We also need to make sure that we're avoiding rationalizing the things that we believe. And this is gonna be an important aspect when it comes to researching. We can't just research information that'll back up our position. We don't wanna rationalize our view if it seems as though the evidence is pointing away from that. We need to make sure that we're looking at information, thinking about information, objectively, and that we're not contradicting ourselves every step of the way. So we're most likely to modify our critically or critically analyze our views when we encounter things like cognitive or social dissonance. When something contradicts or conflicts with our worldviews, it's imperative that we examine and explain why this might be which of the positions that contradict is problematic or could be wrong. 
And how is it that we can fix these logical errors or seemingly incorrect lines of reasoning? Just because we feel a certain way doesn't mean we need to hold on to that position because it matches how we feel. Studies have shown that behavior will change and beliefs will follow. So just because I feel passionate about something now doesn't mean that when my behavior changes or when I learn something new, that my beliefs won't follow. So just because I feel a certain way now, by rationalizing, thinking criti critically, I might change the way that I see a topic. I might change my behavior. My beliefs will follow and my feelings will follow that. We do this all the time. When we grow up, we hold certain beliefs about something. Santa Claus, for instance. But then when my behaviors change, when my beliefs change, my feelings about Santa Claus start to change. I'm not constantly holding grudges against my parents. I'm not sticking to my belief that Santa Claus is real, even after I saw my parents putting Christmas presents under the tree. And so our beliefs and our feelings about anything, even those fundamental things in your life, will begin to adapt and change with your behavior. So keeping an open mind isn't necessarily going against your gut, but it's learning, it's understanding the world better. And by understanding the world better, we're able to hold more accurate beliefs and feel a way in which those beliefs can be supported with good reasoning. So when we think of writing, when we think of expression in general, it's not just one or even two skills that are required to be good or persuasive in your writing or expression. It requires a lot. And each of these skills are something that are going to be looked at in this class. Because when we write, and especially when we're writing in academia, in college, it's not good enough to just write thoughts on a page. Even if the thoughts that you're writing are somehow incredibly transcendent. If they are earth shattering, you're expressing ideas that have never been explored before, it's not enough. Being a good writer, being a good communicator requires elements of critical thinking in addition to other traits and characteristics that we're going to talk about throughout this course, such as being a good researcher. Being someone who uses words clearly and accurately. Having good transitions, writing with proper grammar. These things are needed. because you can have the most sophisticated piece of writing, 
But if it's not readable, if it's not clear, then it's never going to be explored or read. It's never going to be taken serious. We need to make sure that we're writing in the clearest, best way that we can. And to do so, we need to be good critical thinkers. Because critical thinking is what is going to help organize papers, not just on the page, but in your mind.